Welcome to the experimental video for experiment 4. In this experiment we will require a heating source, which in this case is a metal block with holes drilled in it to support the steel test tubes. We will also require a data logger of sorts, which uh, depend on your specific day which we will use. You also require a sandbox for waste, thermocouples, steel test tubes, and a cooling rack. Next, we need to prepare the samples of lead and tin, as described in the practical manual. We will start with the lead-only sample. For the lead and the tin-only samples, you can directly use the polytops provided and simply weigh off the appropriate amounts of mass or the mass required for the reagent um, as described in the practical manual directly in the polytop, as we will now show. Remember to have the scale teared and ensure that if you have any spillage that you carry it over to the waste beaker located at the back of the weighing room. This then comprises our pure lead sample. When preparing the lead and tin mixtures, you first need to weigh off one of the specific reagents, either the lead or the tin, in the polytop vial and get to the appropriate mass. Thereafter, you will add the second reagent, first weighed off in a separate vessel. A, a specific vessel will be provided, either a plastic cup or a different polytop, and then you can combine the two together in the polytop vial provided labeled for that specific mixture. This is what we will now illustrate. Notice how we first weighed the first one reagent in the polytop vial, and now we will weigh the next reagent in a plastic cup, which should be provided in the weighing room on your specific lab day. Once you've weighed the correct amount of mass that you require, you can simply add this mass to the mass already in your polytop file, and then you have made your mixture. Here we are adding the mass of tin to the previously weighed lead to create the mixture A, as described in your practical manual. You can prepare all your samples, your lead only, your tin only, and your samples A through G in such a manner. Next, we will connect each thermocouple to a specific channel on the data logger. So locate the channels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or all the way up to 8 on the data logger, and ensure that one thermocouple is connected to a specific channel on the data logger. This ensures that you will be later be able to translate your data from thermocouple to specific um, data on the computer. Now label your test tubes 1, 2, 3, 4, as well as your mixtures 1, 2, 3, 4, which corresponds to a specific channel on the data logger, and transfer that specific mixture or pure compound to that test tube, to that corresponding test tube. Next, we need to insert the thermocouple as deep as possible in the test tubes. Move the thermocouple around and drill a hole through the granules inside the test tube to ensure that it's nicely inserted. Place the test tubes in the heating mantle while ensuring that the plastic wires of our thermocouples do not come in contact with the wire mesh or the heating source itself, since this will damage them. Please take extreme caution when working around the heating source since it is extremely hot and you can easily burn yourself. Use the thermocouple to periodically mix your mixtures until all the metal has melted. Be careful though since these thermocouples will heat up in the process as well. To ensure that your data logger is set to logging on, first press function to check the setting of it 
and thereafter press set to set the log the data logger to logging on thereafter you will remove the steel test tubes from the heating source using tongs and of course be extremely careful since everything at this stage will be extremely hot place your steel test tubes in the cooling rack You may move your data logger and your cooling rack to a different foam hood to collect the data. After 10 minutes, set your data logger to logging off by first checking that it still says logging on and then pressing the set button to, until it says logging off. Then you may remove the thermocouples from the different channels of the data logger. We will then place the metal test tubes back in the heating source to allow us to remove the thermocouples from the now solidified mixtures in the test, the test tubes. We will now show you that the thermocouples are actually solidified in these test tubes since, of course, the metal has solidified in the bottom of them. Please still be careful because the heating mantle is still going to be extremely hot. Once the alloys have melted, you would, should be able to easily remove the thermocouples and to clean them, you can just gently shake them in the, th the steel test tubes. You can then place them in the cooling rack since they will still be quite hot. And you can also dispose of the alloys and the pure metals in this sand waste box provided using the metal tongs. This will not be easy as you will now see, we, you, you will struggle quite a bit, but just work slowly and work safely and ensure that you discard off all the metal before placing the steel test tube back in the cooling rack. The data is then transferred via the data logger onto a computer using Windows 98, very modern, and is finally saved in an Excel spreadsheet which can be accessed via ClickUp. Thank you for watching.